Hello and welcome to the Album Man and today I'm going to be doing the first part in my top 50 bands slash artists of all time. So yeah, it's so originally going to be top 25 artists but I decided to change it to top 50 so, you know, it'd be over five weeks just like my um, top 50 albums of all time. Yeah, so, um, you know, I hope you enjoy this series and in this episode we're going to be going from number 50 to 41. So, my 50th favourite band of all time is Dragon Force. Um, yeah, so, you know, Dragon Force, this is their most famous album probably in Human Rampage, which is mainly famous because of the song Through the Fire on the Flames, which um, Through the Fire and the Flames, sorry, which featured in Guitar Hero 3, which is such a good game. Really enjoy that game. And yeah, you know, Dragon Force, they really are a great power metal band. Um, as you can see, this copy is actually signed by all the band, uh, except for ZP Fiat, because I got it signed on the Power Within tour along with this. And this is actually also signed by Mark Hudson, who wasn't even on this album at all. Bit odd. But yeah, you know, I, I like both. Um, it was Dragon Force, but ZP's and Mark Hudson's. Um, I just think they're a great power metal band. I don't know why they seem to get some hate in the um, metal community. It seems um, quite silly, to be honest. Okay, and number 49 is, and I'm afraid I don't have my favourite little albums here, but still, is Status Quo. Now, Quo, they are just, yeah, you know, they're such a classic sort of rock and roll bluesy band, or a sort of, yeah, blues-influenced rock and roll from mainly the 70s, but the original lineup might be reforming for a tour next year. And yeah, my favourite album of theirs is, um, well, just under CZ Top's Eliminator, but you probably can't see it, but I have Rockin' All Over the World there. Such a good album, but yeah, Blue For You is good as well, and, um, all my stuff is now falling down from my wall. But, um, yeah, you know, I really like Status Quo. I think they've made a lot of, you know, really great songs with catchy choruses and, you know, even pretty decent guitar work and stuff. They're just a, just a great band. Then at number 48, I have... Oh, this is a band. This was my second ever concert I went to. I went to see the Kaiser Chiefs on their... Well, their second album, what was it called? Let me just have a look a sec. Um, it was called... Um, oh yeah, Yours Truly Angry Mob. And I, this is my favourite of their albums, Employment. And yeah, they are at 48. I just think they're a great band. Um, you know, they may be indie and certainly not like most of the stuff that I review and most of the stuff that's going to be in this list. And you know, they're not that high in it. But I just think they have some really great songs, you know, I would to Wyatt, Oh My God, um, Every Day I Love You Less and Less, Ruby, um, When the Heat Dies Down, you know, they just have a lot of really great catchy choruses and good songs. And yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with them. Um, I have to say their third album, Off With Their Heads, that was, that was awful. And I haven't listened to the Future is Medieval yet, but I picked it up really cheap off Amazon. It seems not many people bought that album. But yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with the Kaiser Chiefs. Then at number 47, I have um, Feeder. And Feeder, there is probably the most famous album, Comfort and Sound, which has Comfort and Sound, Come Back Around. Um, the most famous on the Buck Watchers, that's on Echo Park. I haven't actually listened to it all the way through yet. But, um, yeah, you know, I, I only picked this album up for a quid, um, to us. the feeder albums are very cheap nowadays, but I think they do some really good stuff. I can't say I enjoyed um, 2010's Renegades, but um, I've heard some of their new album, Generation Freak Show, and that sounds like they've gone back to this sound, and yeah, I really want to pick that album up, really desperate to, it sounds so good. But, um, yeah, I don't think it's anything wrong with Feeder. I have seen them live as well um, a couple of years ago, I think. And, yeah, they were really great live as well. Heavier live, I have to say, than they are. But, again, just a band that does really catchy choruses and just some great shortish, you know, pop rock songs, I suppose. Right. Now we have probably the most hate, what well, I would say, definitely the most hated band in my list by most people. But 
I can't deny that I like them, you know, I just do, it's a, a bit of a guilty rock pleasure. Of course this is, as I usually refer to it, the n-word of music, Nickelback. Oh, the amount of hate I got on my Sound of Madness review for just ushering and mentioning their name. Now, this is usually considered the album that, you know, where they died. People, uh, most people say that, you know, things like The Cab and The State were, were, you know, they were actually pretty decent. But they went downhill here. Well, to me, this is their best album. I saw them on this tour. I have a massive poster right up there with them. Um, with a set list that one of the people actually gave me some wordy or something and a plectrum that wordy gave me as well of um, Chad Kroger's and yeah it, it, it was such a great concert I was only quite it was maybe my fourth concert or something third fourth yeah I, th I think it was about my third concert it was when I really started getting into rock music and um, I just you know really enjoyed it and it, it Nickelback are concert, they are one of the bands that got me into rock music through their mainstream catchy choruses of photograph animals, side of a bullet, everyone cared and rock star. Um, I don't know if I'd like, you know, other bands like, you know, Black Sabbath and, you know, Saxon and, you know, all those other, you know, rock metal bands that I tend to review because these really were a gateway to them. So don't hate. And at number 45, I have one of the bands I just mentioned then, which is Saxon. And what a band they are. I have the double greatest hits here because the two Saxon albums I have are both on vinyl. And I have the covers on this wall here. And I don't really want to take them down. So before I show you my greatest hits on CD, well, it's more of a best of, to be honest. But yeah, I, I think they're really good. You know, things like Princess of the Night and Denim and Leather. Uh, you know, Denim and Leather is such a good album. And the other album I have, I think it's The really Eagle Landed, something like that. But yeah, they really are a classic sort of metal hard rock band. I'm not quite sure which they come under. But they're a really classic band, and I, I call them really sort of classic heavy metal along with Priest and stuff. And yeah, I you know, really like them. Right, then we get to number 44, which is the Electric Light Orchestra. And this is my favourite of their albums, which is Out of the Blue, as it has the Concerto for a Rainy Day, which I think is their best piece, ending in the, their most famous song, which is Mr. Blue Sky. But, you know, this album also on disc one has things like Turn to Stone and Sweet Talking Woman. It's just a really strong album, and the band's really strong. I think they've delivered a load of great songs. And I have to say, my favourite ELO song, um, it's not on this album, it's um, The Diary of Horace Wimp. It's a lot of, you know, it's a lesser known of their songs. It was a single, but I don't think it did that well, and it is a lesser known song. But, you know, you really should listen to it. It's such a good song, really. Quite amusing song as well. It's um, lyrically quite funny. But, um, yeah, I think ELO are a really good band, and, again, just, you know, they've done really catchy courses and I like that influence of an orchestra in the you know sort of more electric sound hence the name then we get to number 43 and this is another indie band the killers I will start getting more metal oriented as we get higher up the list but um, I think the killers are a really great band I saw them on the Day and Age tour, and I think Day and Age is their best album with Human, Spaceman, Dustland, Fairy Tale, Neon Tiger, stuff like that. But I also um, enjoy my favourite of their songs is probably When We Were Young. And I, you know, I have all the albums. I think they're just one of those bands that just make really good, catchy songs. And I think Brandon Flowers has a great voice. I think they're just a good band. There's nothing wrong with. The Killers. And then we get to 42. And these, this band, they used to be my favourite band only a few years ago, to be honest. And have far slipped since being number one. And this album used to also be my favourite album of all time. And this album is American Idiot. By Green Day, of course. And, yes, this is still a great album. And I have seen Green Day live. I saw them on the 21st Century Breakdown Tour, which is probably their worst album. <laughs> um... I didn't think it was that good around 21st Century Breakdown. When it actually, at first, I did. At, when I first heard it, I loved it. 
and it was actually my joint favourite album of all time with this, yes, how my musical tastes have changed. And um, yeah, um, I loved it and then I decided to reassess my list about two months later and 21st Century Breakdown went from being joint first in my list to not even being in the top, I think it was only top 25 at that time, to not being even in the top 25. So yeah, but uh, I think Green Day, they just make really solid sort of you know, punks. I wouldn't call them punk person. I don't think they're really punk. They're not the Sex Pistols or the Clash. But um, they certainly have, you can see a sort of a punky influence in their songs. But they're more sort of pop punk, you know, not quite Blink-182 pop punk. I hate them. They're, they're a dreadful band or all-time low. But um, yeah, they're sort of that pop punk sound, and I think they just deliver really great songs and have some pretty interesting lyrics. And you know, I think Jesus the Bear Beer certainly shows that you know they really can play their instruments. They're certainly not untalented. They really are a talented bunch of guys. And yeah, I will certainly buy their albums in the future. And then at number forty-one, we have in the last of this episode, we have good old Meatloaf. And of course here, this is Bat Out of Hell 1, you know, with lyrics by Jim Steinman, and performed by Meatloaf. And, I mean, what a great album this is, and what a great band Meatloaf are. Um, Bat Out of Hell 1, 2 and 3, they're just so good. I can't say I was the biggest fan of Hang Cool Teddy Bear, um, the, well, no, the last album Meatloaf released, I, I haven't even heard that, that that album sounds pretty scary, it has some rappers on it and stuff. And, uh, I must have listened to it on Spotify to be honest, but um, yeah, I'm a bit scared off by the last album. Um, but yeah, certainly, you know, the classic Jim Steinman, Bat Out of Hells, they're really good, one, two, and three. I'm not quite sure which is best, I, I love all of them to be honest, but I only own one and two, really need to get hold of three, I have heard it before. But we need to get hold of it. And yeah, Meatloaf, really great band. And he has such a great voice. Such a great voice. So yeah, that is part one of my top 50 bands of all time. I hope you enjoyed, found it interesting. So, thanks for watching. Comment, wait, subscribe. And as usual, long live rock and roll.